I've had the 950XL for a couple of weeks now and I want to do a quick review of what I like and dislike about it. I'm not going to go heavy into specs, this isn't going to be a yes it's better than an iPhone, no it's not better than an iPhone, yes it's better than a Galaxy Note or an S6 or whatever. Um, this is literally going to be more of a, an experience thing. So what do I like about the phone? Um, first thing, Windows Hello. I, I like Windows Hello. Um, it's the thing where it scans your iris and unlocks the phone for you. I kind of like it better than fingerprint scanners, just probably because it's just different. Um, it's very easy to use as well. You don't really need to do anything. You just turn the phone on. Uh, this red light will turn on here. And if we can get it to do it. Bang, done. It just scans your eye and in you get. Now this has worked in the dark, in the light. Uh, it's worked through shades as well. So I've been wearing sunglasses, turned it on and it scanned my iris and let me in. If you um, don't get it to recognize you, then you can train it under different light sources. So you just go back into the settings again, say um, add profile or something like that, and then it will rescan your eyes again. A little, pic, a little bar comes up where you, it's a picture of your, your eyes basically. You have to fit your eyes in there and it scans you again in that light source and remembers it. So um, it even works when you're walking. So it's, it's good. I like it, um, probably just because it's new, but Eh, that's what fingerprint scanners are as well, so it's basically on par with that. Uh, the screen's very nice, I like the resolution of it, I came from a 920, so the, the resolution is way above and beyond that. The text pops out very nicely on the screen, um, the colours are very vibrant, uh, the touch experience on the screen is very nice as well. It's very smooth when you're going up and down, especially compared to the 920. Um, very impressed with the screen resolution and everything like that. Uh, the size is very nice as well. Again, okay, came from a 920. It was a lot smaller screen. This is a 5.9 inch, 5.9 inch screen. Yeah, it's a large screen. Uh, the 950s are 5.2, so it's a bit smaller. Uh, it does have a bit of a better resolution if you go for the standard 950. I wanted this because I mainly read emails on my phone, and I wanted a bigger screen to be able to do that on, and it makes it much easier. Plus, the typing and replying to emails. The keyboard's bigger, so therefore it's a lot easier to type on this as well. So I'm very happy with the screen. The one drawback is there, it's not really a one-handed phone. If you hold it here and you're holding it as you would normally do, you can't reach anything up in that top left-hand corner. Microsoft's answer to this is hold the Windows key. And this happens. It turns into one-handed mode, so you can actually get to stuff. Um, don't be fooled, this is not a fully usable screen at this point because you cannot scroll down to your other icons. It literally just brings the top of the screen down to the bottom of the screen. Um, but handy if you want to get something up there and you don't want to let go of the phone. Um, something else that can be annoying is if you've got something open and you want to close that thing, hold the back key as you normally do, it's up here, you have to scroll it all the way down to there to get rid of it. So you can kind of try and really there. You can flick it down fast, but that doesn't always work. So you find yourself having to go all the way down, and that can be a bit of a pain, to be honest with you. But that's what you get for having a bigger screen. Um, what else have we got? Split screen mount is nice as well in this because it's got the bigger screen. This actually works quite nicely. So if we take a look at our email here, and this is a normal email, but if you flip it to the side, you get this where it's very much an Outlook experience. So you can click on the email there and the contents of it come up in the other side there. You can flick through, read it, do whatever you want, get rid of it, delete, all the rest of it, reply and the big keyboard will come up. So that, that can be nice for heavy emailers. Uh, so just a nice little feature and something to take advantage of with the larger screen. Uh, the speed of the phone, I'm very impressed with as well. Now, it should be fast because it's got eight cores. That uh, said, I haven't had a chance to compare it to an iPhone or an Android or any of the latest Androids, things like that. So all we'll do here is I will load one of everyone's favorite games, Candy Crush Saga. And you can see how long it takes to load and whether that compares to your current phones that you've got. So you can basically judge on whether you think it's fast enough for what you need it to do. For me, like I say, coming from a 920, it's a hell of a lot faster, so I'm very happy with the speed of it. 
Um, the 3D graphics, things like the Tomb Raider, Endless Runner, they work very well as well, so speed-wise it's good. Something else to note is about the screen on this, you don't have anything at the bottom here. The old Windows phones, this is where your bar would be down here with the uh, start button, the back button, the search button. This gets rid of it. It's uh, a virtual one, so you have to scroll up to get the bar up. That gives you the advantage you get the entire screen, so that's nice as well. Um, speaking of the screen, let's do an Amazon Kindle book so you can see what that looks like. And I'm going to open up with the text on there. So, yeah, there, I mean, there's your text. It is nice, it pops. It's very pleasant to read on. I actually read on this now instead of services or anything like that. This I really enjoy reading on this. The one downside you're going to get is quite a glassy screen. So, as you can see there, you're getting reflections off of what's behind you when light sources are around. So, reading outside could be a pain. You might get reflections of trees and stuff. But outside of that, I love the screen. It's very nice. Um, for all of you people that like to travel places, it's dual SIM. So you can stick in your um, second country SIM card in there and flip between the two as you're going around jet sitting in these fancy lives you're all leading. Uh, you can also add external storage to this as well. It's all done on the inside. You have to basically, uh, there's a cut out here. You see that there's this tiny divot there which you pull up, which brings up the uh, case, which is not a pleasant thing to do. And I'm not going to do it now. You have to basically hold that. Uh, there you go and there's your inside so you've got your micro SD card goes in there you've got a sim up there and then there's a sim here as well so uh, very handy for things like that if you're jet sitting around or if you've got a bunch of stuff you want to put out I mean it's got 32 gig in it anyway so you might not need to increase the storage now uh, let's talk about some miscellaneous stuff battery I go through about half a charge a day um, that does vary though, heavy GPS usage, an hour and a half in the GPS sucked it down 50%. So I normally use GPS for about an hour a day, um, going, but I always also charge it while I'm driving as well, so that's not really a deal for me. So if you can heavy GPS, plug it in uh, while you're GPSing it. Outside of that, you're going to get about half the battery gone during the day of general usage. So charging it overnight like everyone else does. Um, I find the phone actually quite nice to hold, especially when the reading here, the black is kind of a, a matte, uh, but I find it quite pleasant on the fingers to, to hold. It doesn't get tiring or anything like that. So um, a lot of people have said it feels cheap, and I will kind of agree with that. When I took it out of the box, I had that feeling of, I paid all that money for this thing. Um, I think the reason it feels cheap is because of the, well, I know the reason it feels cheap is because of the plastic backing. I think they put the plastic backing on there because of all this design for Lumia stuff that's coming out now. So they're basically saying, we're going to give you this plastic backing. It's not going to be the greatest back in the world, but go buy one of these fancy designer backs that personalize your phone to whatever you want it to be, as opposed to having to take what they're giving you. Plus, if you put in a case on the phone, why do you want a fancy phone anyway? You're just covering it with a case at that point, and there's just there's no point in having a fancy phone if you're just going to have a case over it that's going to make it look fancy. So I'm assuming that's why they've done that. Um, now on to the what I don't like about this phone. Um, I can't say there's anything I hate about the phone uh, from a personal standpoint, but for people looking to buy this phone, you need to be aware of one big thing. When you get this phone, it has Windows Phone 10 on it. Windows Phone 10 is still, I consider, a beta operating system. Microsoft are actually working on it and rolling out regular updates to the build. Uh, in fact, I believe today they actually pulled one of the builds because it was causing installation issues. Uh, this means that it's not going to be as stable as it should be. You're not getting a polished operating system when you buy this phone. Uh, for me, the phone has randomly rebooted on me during the day. It has crashed and rebooted a couple of times when I've answered phone calls. So if you're not willing to be a bit tolerant and accept some of the shortcomings while Microsoft work out the kinks in the operating system, then I would stay away. Um, and honestly, if you're forking out $650 for a brand new phone, you really shouldn't have to accept shortcomings. Uh, if you're looking at a flagship phone, you should have a polished operating system on that phone. So, uh, 
yeah, it's this is not a polished operating system. Um, you're helping Microsoft test their OS while they try and finish it all up. So, like I say, for 650, that's not something you should have to do. So, why would you buy this phone? Well, if the most important thing to you in a phone is the camera, and you can accept a phone that lets um, got some quirks to it, some personality, then jump on this phone. I mean, the camera is fantastic. Let's uh, let's see. I've got in here photos. So, from a let's look at this. So this is um, a slow mo video that it takes. Does it 150, 120 frames per second? So, I mean, it's it's a good picture from a. This is from a, a phone. Um, it's very nice. You can also, if you want, edit this and you can make parts of it fast and parts of it slow. But once you've done that and you've saved it, you can't go back and edit it after that. Um, picture wise, this was something I took of my cat. I mean, you can zoom right in there and you can see quite nice detail on this. I mean, it's a lovely phone. And again, as you saw there, you can modify the lighting for it as well outside of having picked the phone so I can make it darker, I can make it brighter and I can do all that from the phone without any other software required for post-processing. Um, we've also got uh, some close-up stuff here. I mean this I took with the phone as well. I mean nothing special or spectacular, I literally just put the phone on the floor, focused it on this middle ground here and took it. The same with here, focused on the foreground here, took the phone. I mean it's a very nice camera. Um, the problem is, it's a nice camera that comes on a $650 phone, and if you're into cameras, you probably can have a DSLR, and if you want to get into cameras, you're gonna to wanna to buy a DSLR, which is about the same price as the phone. So, do you wanna find buy a phone with some quirks and a good camera, or you just wanna go and get yourself a DSLR? Personal choice there. Uh, if the most important thing to you, on a phone to you is the screen and you have to have the highest resolution possible then again this phone will do you proudly it has a fantastic resolution on the phone um, as long as you can live with the quirks again it's not a polished operating system and that's a big problem I have with a $650 phone if all you're looking for in a phone is a good camera and a nice screen uh, then and this does pain me to say this because I really don't like the company personally but go buy yourself an iPhone uh, you will get a nice camera on the iPhone you will get a nice screen on the iPhone and you will get a polished finished operating system then you won't have to deal with the app gap that's very apparent in the Microsoft uh, platform at the moment everything you can possibly want on a phone app wise is available on iPhone hardly anything you could possibly want is on the, I, the Windows phone yet my alarm system is not on the phone. My old alarm system is not on the phone. Um, the ODB2 scanners for cars, they don't come on this phone. You, you cannot get a lot on this phone. They say they've got all the main ones, but um, I think Instagram doesn't even have an app yet. So why? I mean, all the banks have pulled their app. So honestly, I buy this phone. It's $650. The phone is nice. The operating system on it is not yet. It's a beta operating system, and you kind of you use it daily and you kind of think to yourself did I miss an opportunity to jump onto the iOS platform at this point so if you're a Microsoft fanboy this is a great phone if you're willing to put with the quirks for a great camera and a good screen this is a good phone if you want a daily reliable phone this is not the phone for you um, I'm sorry to say it because I really want Microsoft to succeed in this space I think having three different ecosystems competing is a good idea this just I hope they can do it with this phone, it's just not there yet. Not something I can really recommend to anybody unless they're willing to be a beta tester. Um, so that's my opinion, everyone will have their own. If you have any questions about the phone, please uh, post a comment, let me know, and I will try and answer them for you. Uh, thanks for watching.